I have the turbine out for modifications, but for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna open this up so the penstock is draining. It's been six or eight months since I put this cap on and I haven't been up here or taken it off since. So let's see what it looks like inside. And I brought a few things with me to take care of some uh, potential issues or um, sustained issues that I've had over the winter. Ugh. Okay, the inside of here looks kind of how I'd expect it to. We have a little bit of residual algae growth on there. Uh, part of the reason why this is black is so that no light gets through to promote algae growth. And then the lid there too helps prevent algae growth. But I still have a hole in the side. This is the overflow. And we, we see, well, we can address the water here. It's uh, steady, not very high, and very cold. So I, we can shut this and we'll see what it looks like overflowing. Okay, hold on. There we go. You're not shutting all the way. There we go, now you shut all the way. There's a little bit of silt growth collection in the bottom. I don't think it's really enough to warrant trying to empty this out. But I, I was getting a lot of biological debris down through the penstock. And the bottom of this pipe here, there's a bunch of holes drilled, but they're not covered with a mesh. You can see that that little pipe there is covered with a mesh, but it's not connected to anything. That actually will goes to here, which is a secondary drain that I had hooked up for initial testing with a garden hose only. It's not connected here, but that's where a garden hose would connect if I wanted to run that 800 feet down the hill. So back to the biological growth. Um, I think what squirrels have been doing is through this overflow here, they like to stash their nuts. So I've been getting a lot of nuts in here. And a couple times they would go down and clog up my nozzle. And I, I really don't want that to happen because if the water stops flowing and it's below freezing outside, then I'll freeze the pen stock and burst it. And I don't want that to happen. Uh, naturally, this spring water is, well, it's cold right now, but comparatively in the winter, it's warm. I also have here a drain that I can stick some channel locks in the end here and unscrew that and let it drain out. But again, that's not really worth doing right now. Plus I forgot to bring the channel locks up and I don't want to go down another for another trip. While we're waiting for that to fill up, I can give a little bit of an overview of the area because I have a lot of new viewers that are not familiar with the system. I'm up here on the hillside, right at the edge of a power line cut. At the top of a very, very steep hill, sorry, it's, oh, it's slippery up here. But way down there is my house, almost directly downhill. In fact, this, this water flows past my house. And in fact, the uh, where the water comes out of this pipe, this pen stock, goes back into where it came out of. Where I am here is 280 feet or 270 feet approximately. I don't know the exact height, but I'm that much above where the turbine is. So that creates all the pressure that I have, 117 working PSI. Again, I don't know the exact number. Also, my gauges are not calibrated. It's just the closest guess that I have. And I'm about 750 feet across the ground away from it. This is a spring that has been developed multiple times before. This is actually the second catchment spring box that I know of. 
There's another one down underneath those rocks there that I have found. And the spring is actually coming out of the ground up in here. So I dug further up into the ground and I added a perforated section of pipes. It's actually a couple branches of pipes in there that allow the water to filter in into this pipe here, this white one that goes down to my, we'll call it a four bay tank. It's the most technical term I have for it. And then this other black pipe here is an overflow pipe. If my collection pipe is full, that may have been used a few times, but for the most part, this three inch pipe will flow 99.9% .9 of the flow that ever comes out of this spring. So it's not worth sizing it up more for that extra 0.1% of flow that could come out of here. I'm not 100% efficient on collecting all the water. This is a dribble that is bypassing my collection system. I don't know that that's worth going back up in there and addressing that and servicing it and digging it in better with more clay to seal it. So I, I think for the time being, unless this gets worse, it's just going to stay like that. And it's been like that for about two years since I set this system up. We can see it's taking a, a little bit of time to fill this up. It's been about five minutes. It does seem that I have a little leak down there too. So again, I don't know if that's worth addressing either. Okay, it's steady state overflowing now. Here's what it looks like inside the tank, pretty clear. A little bit hazy, but some of that might be attributed to the water coming up and disturbing stuff as it rose. <clears throat> I wanted to put an overflow on this, two reasons. First, to keep squirrels from putting things in there. Second is so that I could put a pipe on the inside and adjust the upper level here. So I could actually get a little bit more pressure if I rose this up some. And I'd have a little bit better sensitivity for a valve controller because I'd have a, a larger buffer in this tank to measure the pressure at the bottom. So I'm gonna open the penstock and let the water flow down. Come on, get on there. Let it flow down again. <clears throat> That's a problem. There's no pressure on it. This is a this over here is a vent tube, so it allows any suction to go through. God. Oh, that's not good. Why is it jammed? Okay. I just got it open, it was stuck. So now it's draining down in the penstock. The penstock, which was empty. The penstock has a capacity of about 70 gallons. And now we can hear that it's, it's actually pulling a suction. I can put my thumb over this and it'll suck down even harder as a vacuum. This should be everything that I need to put it in. I've got a little bit of soap in here. This is called a, whoops. This is called a uniseal. This is a three inch. Everything that I have up here is three inch. Everything I have down below is three inch. So this will go in here with the uniseal keeping it tight. Well, first the uniseal just pops in like that and it doesn't actually seal until you have the pipe on. So I've got the soap as lubrication around the pipe. Okay. 
And I'll lube this up too. And it should just pop right in there. Should. Of course it won't. Ah, got it. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm gonna use this as the intake inside. And okay, so a, a problem I have here is this is loosey-goosey because these have a, a taper fit and I just removed the part that was the taper so that I could get it through the uniseal. So I'm gonna have to cut that off. There we go. This is a razor saw from Koyuko. I don't know. I'll have a, a link to these in the description. It's a woodworking pool saw, but it works fantastic on PVC. Now this can clean that up. Of course, it's got soap on it too. That'll the soap will really let it slip around too. And get all the soap rinsed off. There. Now I have a adjustable height intake, and I have another. Oh, four to six inches of potential head height there. And now for the overflow, I'm just gonna have this elbow that'll be press fit on. The PVC pipe is gonna be cut about, about there. Stick that on there. It's all just press fit so I can take it apart if I'm up here if I need to. And that goes on there and then just to keep it looking nice I'm going to push it in until it's flush. <coughs> flush up against the barrel <coughs> and the vertical. And there we go. Okay, here's the the new overflow uh, working. I do have some additional water that backs up into the supply pipe, but that's okay. And this will also help with the erosion that I've been getting down underneath the edge of the barrel there. So that's not optimal. Also, the amount of leaking that I am now getting there is, <laughs> I can't live with that and that, so I need to do something about that. If you have any ideas, please let me know, because I'm, besides draining this, drying it, filling it with silicone caulk and then jamming it back together, I can't think of a good way of sealing that without a giant bulkhead fitting, if I can find one. So that's where I am with that. Uh, some other things I need to, Come back up here some other time because it's it's getting late i need to go down and eat dinner with my family to build like a rock wall there but up against the collection we are here i suspect that squirrels were putting nuts and stuff in there but i'm not absolutely certain they may have been somehow putting them up in here maybe and that getting down into the pipe because if you look down in there, right, right there, you can see the end of the pipe. So I'm not sure. I, you know, it's it has a cap on it, and there's a bunch of holes, but I don't know. Could be stuff getting in through there. So I need to cover that up. And then I would also like to come back up here, spray paint all of these with camouflage, just so I don't get any unwanted attention. You know, I have permission from the property owners to do this, but I don't want other people walking by and obviously seeing that something is going on here and messing with it.
We got a torrential downpour last night. So let's go see what the spring's doing, especially with that new overflow. When I do that, I want to open this up to let it free flow. Also, our, our PSI is, that's one PSI higher than I've seen it ever before. You see uh, right in the middle of those two lines below 120. All right. So first I'm gonna shut this off. I'm just gonna let it free flow out of there. So I'm gonna have water that flows out of out of this one and this one. I'm gonna turn this on and this is also like a, a system flush, you could say. And now we're sucking air from the spring, so this is the actual flow that's coming out of the spring exactly right here. It's reached steady state. Or now it has reached steady state. I really wish the camera did justice to how perfectly green this all looks. You know, in a place where it's brown for eight months of the year, this is very nice. Serendipitously, serendipitously, fortunately, I decided to come up here and see how it was doing. And that's not a good sign. You know, I have the, the weir there, water coming around the side there, and that's the overflow, which is flowing water, but not enough. Which means that something is going wrong. Something's going wrong in there. And there. Okay, let's see what's going on in here. Oh, heavy. Huh. Well, it appears that most of the water is bypassing my collection system, so I need to address my collection system. Great. <laughs> 